nothing else matters My feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy There's nothing like the sound of Carolina hoodies Hi, I'm Rose Cushing, host of Carolina Hoofbeats TV. From all of us at Cushing Media and my buddy Dunnett here, we'd like to thank you for watching for the past three years. We're very proud to be North Carolina's very first and only weekly TV show devoted entirely to the equine industry. Join us each week as we explore horse-human relationships. Dunnett and I never miss an episode, and I hope you don't either. My name is Scott Brookins and I am the owner of Brookins Construction and MD Barnmaster of the Carolinas. At MD Barnmaster we have the best warranty in the business. We have a variety of designs to choose from. Our barns are easily customizable to meet and fit uh, meet your needs. Uh, we have financing available to those who qualify. Our barns are fire resistant and they hold their value with little maintenance. Let us build your dream barn for you today. So we were talking some about tent camping. A lot of people camp out of trailers and it's really nice when you're in a nice campground and you've got the trailer, you just pull out, pull out your awning and you're done. But in the back country, you can't do that. So when you're camping in the back country or in a horse camp like this and you just want to camp in a tent, um, we use, this is how I like to set up. Um, in the winter months, I actually have a tarp that goes, I mean, a, a Thing that goes all the way around. It's called a wind curtain that goes all the way around the, the canopy. This is one of those pop-up canopies so you can put it up in 10 minutes. I like to put the, usually I put the tent kind of sticking out the back with just the door under the canopy. Since they were calling for rain, uh, we decided to have the whole thing under. And if we were camping in the back country, we would have the same tent, but we'd have a tarp strung between two trees or probably four trees. Um, it's nice to have a place to crawl out of the tent and have a, a, a dry area in case it's raining. Um, this is something a friend of mine a long time ago showed me in the corner if you're interested for us ladies that like a bathroom. Not all campgrounds have them. Sometimes you don't want to run to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Uh, it's a hula hoop with uh, shower curtains around it. And we hang it from two of the, the um, I got little S hooks and put on the hula hoop. Two of the S hooks are fastened to the, in the corner of the canopy on the metal part of the canopy. And the other one we just have a couple of strings. Uh, hanging down from the ceiling that it's of the canopy that that stay there all the time and we hook to those So for the ladies that like bathrooms, you can have your own little private bathroom If you have a porta potty just put it in there and someplace private to go You just have to be careful when the wind blows hold the sides um, It's not a problem when I have the wind curtain up because it's completely enclosed, but when it's warm like today uh, It can blow up in, in an inconvenient time so um. I love that idea. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, tell, talk a little bit about what else you take. Um, oh, camping stuff? Mm -hmm. So we, this is kind of a, we were just coming for one night, so we didn't bring the whole kit and caboodle. But um, obviously it's some kind of stove. Um, this is a little uh, packing stove, so you can, we can take it packing with us. We have a regular Coleman stove. Um, this is actually Coleman too, but we have a regular Coleman stove that folds up with two burners. But for a short trip or a packing trip, this thing collapses, this unscrews, and then the bottom's separate and your tank's separate. You could put it in your pot, uh, either in your saddlebags or usually if we're going to carry this much stuff, we'll actually take um, the pack horse. Um, I've got another little stove. I think it's in here. This is something that um, I bought a long, long time ago and then I recently wanted to see if I could find fuel for it and they still make them, so I bought another one. Um, this is a backpacking stove. All the backpackers probably know about it, but the horse people may not. This little thing, 
pops up like that and you have these little cubes, um, you light them with a cigarette lighter, you put it in there and you can actually boil a pot of water on it. And that's real easy. Before I had the pack horse, this was all I took to cook with because I didn't have the extra room. Um, these are, it's called Esbit. It's the company that makes them and you can find them online. I think it's made in England, but they still make them apparently. So, and then just things that are easy. These are the uh, stuff that nests together. You've probably seen these. I used to backpack way back when, so now I horse pack. And, uh, so our open show concept is for everyone. It is um, for the person who keeps their horse in their backyard. It's for the show person who may want to come and just get a little extra experience uh, on a young horse. It's for grandparents to come and enjoy. It's for children to get to decorate their horses and put bows in their hair and sparkles in their tails and come and just enjoy. We can be indoors or out. If it's raining, come right ahead. We will be going anyway. We've decided to host the shows every third Saturday of the month. So if it's six o'clock on a Saturday night and it is the third Saturday of a month, you can bet that we're having a horse show in Winston-Salem. And we so want everybody to come and support us and enjoy and have fun. Together, and then you can close it up. And that fits really nicely in your saddlebags or, or in your pack if you're packing. Um, Patrick actually found these, um, these little, um, I don't know, what kind of metal is that? It's uh, aircraft aluminum. It's, it's, it's well very, very lightweight and they come out with, uh, you can put, they come together with a little clip so you've got all your dinnerware right there and that packs really easy in your saddlebags too. So, you know, if you're on a trip, obviously you're rewashing stuff, which is a good place to put a, to mention about um, carrying uh, something to disinfect your water with, even your wash water. If you're washing pots and pans, you're not supposed to wash in the creek. You take the water away from the creek so you don't get the soap in the creek. But you, you want to go back then and rinse them with something that's sterile. Either boil some water and sterile. That's what I usually do is boil water and then rinse them after I wash them. So um, I have known people that have gotten Giardia out in the wilderness. It's not a fun thing to have. The nice thing about Giardia, it takes a week or two before it hits you. So you'll be back from your trip, but then you'll be in the bathroom for three weeks. So um, disinfect your water. Um, and like I said, when we're, when we're camping out of the truck, we obviously have a cooler and a separate box. Put your food in your uh, truck at night. If you're camped in the back country, the best thing to do is take your food, make sure your dishes are clean, because dirty dishes will attract bear too, but take your food and take it somewhere away from camp. Um, the old thing about tying it in a tree. In the Smokies, they actually have um, uh, cables way up in the air with a pulley system, and you can pull your packs up way out of reach of bears. But most of the time in the National Forest, you're just out in the middle of nowhere, and so you just try to take your food away from camp. Um, Make sure you take everything out that you bring in, pack it in, pack it out. There's no reason in the world you carry that stuff in, there's no reason in the world not to carry it back out. When, when it gets dirty, you're, um, if you take canned goods, smash the cans, put them in a plastic bag, take them out with you. I always carry extra Ziploc bags so we can put dirty stuff in it if you don't want the dirty stuff in, but take it back out with you. No, the next camper doesn't want to have to pick up your trash. And we have a in the center, I have these, these strings. It's baling twine. Everybody's got, everybody's got horses that's got baling twine. Probably can't see them, but I have these little pieces of baling twine and they're tied to the metal and they just stay there when I, when I pack the tent up at night, when I pack the canopy up and go to the next place. One in the center to hold the uh, lantern. You gotta watch your head, because sometimes you whack your head in the center. And then the ones, I have it in two quarters because we actually, actually also have a cowboy shower. So I have another, um, little hula hoop with the shower curtains for the cowboy shower that I didn't bring, so I can't show you that. But we made it, I got the idea to come up with, a, I had one that had a motor on it and it hooked it up to a car battery. And then I got the idea to use um, a sprayer, a garden sprayer and hook a, um, the sink sprayers that you use in your sink. And I went to Lowe's with my two little ends and I went to the plumbing section. And I said, how to connect these two ends? So the end coming out of the the pump up sprayer connects to the end that's got your little, like you have in your bathroom sprayer, and it works great. You boil you some water and uh, mix a little bit of, well, usually a little bit of boiling water and a whole lot of cold water, and then you can take a shower.
I'm David King with 5K Arena. This is my wife, Ivy King. Uh, we put on sorting, pennons, and cuttings. Um, I'll let my wife talk to you about the type of feed we use from Mule City Feed. We called Paul up with Mule City Specialty Feeds about five years ago. He was absolutely wonderful to work with. We had a need to fill because our commercial feed had just gotten higher and higher and our feed bill was through the roof. He helped us mix a feed that was exactly what we were looking for. Our horses have stayed fat and shiny, had plenty of energy without losing their minds, and we couldn't be happier. This, I pretty much take even, even at home when I'm going for a short ride, mainly so I can take some water, something to drink, maybe a snack to eat. Um, and I've probably gotten into this more since I got involved with backcountry horsemen, but just riding trails, you want to make sure you have a way to get around you. Riding through the woods and suddenly your trail's blocked. If you can't find a way to go around it, you get either turn around and go back or go through it. And I don't like to turn around and go back. So I keep a folding saw. Um, there's a lot of different ones out there. This is probably not the best one, but um, Corona makes a real good one. Um, a folding saw that you can cut through small trees. If you've got a small tree down or if it's leaning and you can't get under it and you don't want to go around it. These are really handy um, when you're doing trail work uh, because you can use these from horseback. When we're doing trail work on the organized work days, we'll have the big loppers. So we're going to show you a way to carry those as well. But if you're just for an everyday ride and you come across and you've got some extra time, you know, snip a few limbs as you go by and help clear the trail for the next person. Um, it works really, if I'm doing a lot of it, I'll stick it in the sheath. Otherwise, I'll just pull it out and clip one. It took me a while to get my horse used to standing still so I could clip. But um, now he kind of enjoys the opportunity to stand still for a few minutes. And I just keep stuff in here because um, so one side always has a little bit of food and water. And you know, I just, ladies, you know what these are for when you're out in the woods. One plug I will say, please bury your Kleenex. You can take the toe of your boot and just dig a little hole. It doesn't have to be real deep, but make sure you cover it up with enough dirt so that the next person coming along doesn't just uncover it. Get off the trail, go away in the woods, away from the trail, because if you don't, the next person coming by is going to uncover what you left, and that's just not a pretty sight. So that's always good to have. Um, I have, we talked about the high lines. Before I had a pack horse, I actually had a high line made out of this stuff. This is a really lightweight nylon. Um, and yeah, they could pull it down, but they, if they really pull it hard enough, they might could pull that rope down too. We use the rope because we have a pack horse now. But I have a couple of these, um, and I just happen to have a whole box of this webbing. And I made a couple of lead lines because it's great to use to, um, to cross tie my horse. If you don't have this, Patrick, oh, you took the bridle off. Our horses don't have bridles on right now, but. Um, if you don't have ropes, take the reins and just tie one rein to one tree and one rein to another tree because you don't want the horses eating trees. It's just an unsightly, it doesn't look good. The forest managers don't like it and it's going to kill the trees. Um, hoof pick is always a good thing to have because you're gonna, your horse is going to pick up a rock. Um, I actually had a horse one time, it was a neighbor's horse that I had borrowed. I didn't pick his feet before I left, I should have, but started limping going down the trail, got out, pulled pulled this out and he had a piece of barbed wire. You know, the little, the barbs on the barbed wire fence. I don't know where it came from because neither my pasture nor her pasture has barbed wire, but there's all barbed wire parts around. So good to have a hoof pick. Um, little thing of, of insect repellent that Patrick got me uh, because I hate bugs. But, um, and, and because I'm a vet, I keep some supplies, but a lot of people do anyway. A little bit of banamine. Uh, I've stopped more than once and help somebody that had a horse that was colicky or maybe they were um, um, stone bruised and they were limping, you know, a little shot of, um, talk to your vet, don't, don't just go do this on your own, but talk to your vet and one shot of banamine could maybe save a horse's life sometime. This is my little bitty first aid kit. When I go on a pack trip, I take a lot more, but it just has band-aids, a little bit of disinfectant and um, uh, Tylenol and ibuprofen because there's nothing worse than being out on the trail and having a headache and you're four hours away from home and by the time you get home it's really pounding so it really helps to have a little something with you. Um, this is kind of good to have when your horse steps on the reins and breaks the reins. Uh, I just have some little scrap pieces 
of, of leather. Same thing. I've more than once found somebody along the trail with broken equipment and gave them a piece of leather and they really appreciate it. So um, these things are packed pretty tight. I actually had to sew extra Velcro to get them. Um, people laugh at all the stuff I have, but it's kind of handy if you need it. The, I started carrying these when we started doing packing. It's the disinfectant tablets, the iodine ones. These are actually chlorine ones I haven't tried yet. So um, on a pack trip, they'd be handy, but you just never know. I mean, if you got something happened out on the trail and you couldn't get home, you c if you can get to a stream, you can make water that's safe to drink. Um, let's see, I have, oh, the cigarette lighter, you know, because if you are out on the trail and have to stay overnight, you can build a fire. So just little things. Um, there's my other. This, I, now that Patrick's getting me the little little spray bottle of, this, of insect repellent, I don't have to use these as much, but I used to keep these. Same thing if you're in the, if you get stuck out somewhere and you need, you're going to be staying somewhere, you want to um, be nice to not be eaten by mosquitoes or flies. Um, this is probably the most important thing I have in my, this is maps. You know, I, 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 I see people on the trail somewhere and they don't know where they're at and they don't have a map. And, you know, I guess I maybe have been guilty of riding places with no maps, but if there's a map available, if you're planning a trip, go online and look. Somebody somewhere has got a map. At least it gives you some idea where you're at if you're lost. And I have two or three maps that I use a lot of. Um, I think I actually, in here, I also keep my Coggins, copy of my Coggins. And I keep, uh, I think there's a copy of my ID because I don't always have my wallet with me. And so if somebody finds me on the side of the trail, they'll know who I am. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I have a little journeyman's tool, which may be overkill, but, um, and I used to keep a compass. There's a compass on my phone now, so still not a bad thing to have. And I actually, because some of my maps are really small, I have a magnifying glass. But just the main things that you probably need is the maps. This for the ladies. Remember to dig your hole. Um, you know, something to repair. Maybe a little first aid kit. And, and I like these. And, of course, the lead rope. You know, a lot of this other stuff is optional. But um, if you have room for it, why not stick it in there? You might need it sometime. Um, Patrick's got his horse with one of these she's. And we actually learned about this from another backcountry horseman, Deidre, that you um, talked to earlier, had one of these when we were on a backcountry horseman trip. We learned a lot from each other. And it, what a great way to carry your loppers. We used to tie them across the back of the saddle, and then you'd have to untie them and lop something, and then you'd have to tie them back. And this way you just grab it out, pull it out. Ah, you got these in here pretty tight. Do you have them fastened in there somehow? Okay. Yeah, he shoved them in there. So you pull them out, you cut, and you keep going. And this one, these, this particular style also has a place for your folding saw. He's got a really nice one. It's a little monster saw, so I can get it up, open. That's a, Corona makes really good. Um, my um, uh, pruning saw is also a Corona. And it, it also fits in here. I mean, this kind of thing you're not going to need for normal riding. If you go riding in the Smokies, um, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Parks, they're allowed to come in with chainsaws one month out of the year. Any other time, if you get across a tree, this is what you're going to have. And actually, I've got a little sheath on it. But, um, and, and I rode in the Smokies with some folks three years ago, and we came across a tree that was about this big around. And somebody in the group had one of these, and we took turns. Four of us took turns and finally got cut through. But we couldn't have gotten through the trail if we hadn't. So Depending on where you're going, you, you may need a bigger saw, but just a little folding saw just for normal riding in the National Forest. They're allowed to use chainsaws year-round if you, have, um, a, a, if you have a certification. I think somebody talked about that. So don't be going out and just pulling up a chainsaw anywhere in the National Forest. You really need to go through the training and make sure you're safe. But as far as the little hand saws, you know, you're welcome to do that as long as it's down. You can't cut live trees. These trees, we want them to be here for the next generation. So. But if it's on a designated trail, designated trail system, and there's a tree down, you cut it out of the way for the next person. Welcome to Martin County in northeastern North Carolina, located halfway between Raleigh and the Outer Banks. Martin County's got art. Great shopping. Great churches. Great kayaking. Great business opportunities. Great food. NASCAR. Great golf. Great medical care. The Bob Martin Ag Center. Safe communities. <laughs> Great RV camping. Great nature trails. Great history and heritage. 
Martin County has great schools. And there's great fishing. Well, there you have it. Martin County. It's all here. We're waiting for you. I'm, a, I'm new at packing and I wanted a system that was easy for me to handle and although I took a pack course and I was taught the knots and the ropes it was very hard for me to remember how to do it correctly and this is really a no-brainer system for me. Um, each of these packs comes with straps that you can adjust and the straps have buckles here where, with different holes on them so you can make them longer or shorter depending on the size and shape of your horse and these simply just s pop right on top of the decker or if you had a cowboy saddle up here you could use the conversion system where it just fits on top of the saddle but we've got a decker so we're going to just set these up on top like that now, I'll have to confess that this box is empty. It's not usually that easy to lift it. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to add is that when you pack your boxes, it's very important to put the heavy stuff on the bottom and the light stuff on top. It's the most, probably the most important thing you do is to balance your packs. It's critical that your packs be balanced. And I'm very particular about it. Um, this last trip I went out, I had them close to half a pound apart, so that really makes for a safe ride. Okay, this one has an has a extra girth on it, and it simply slides on top of the decker. And we're going to go ahead and just tighten this down because it is part of putting your pack on your horse. Okay, these, these boxes are going to have all my, my heavier stuff. My lightweight stuff like tents, tarps, ground cover are in, are in my top pack. This top pack is also easy. I really like it. I like the shape. It fits right on top. It's got the straps. And there's a strap and a buckle on both sides. And so I'm ready to go. If you're interested in a career working with horses, then Martin Community College is the place for you. MCC's Equine Technology Program is the only one offered among North Carolina's 58 community colleges. The program is management oriented with classes in breeding, nutrition, training, riding, equine health, and more. Graduates can leave MCC prepared to work in recreational and racing barns, breed to discipline oriented farms, or assistant farm management. For more information, contact Martin Community College today. Adriana Nunnery and I am part of the Cumberland County 4-H Horse Club Thunderhoofs. Today I will be teaching you about the cue for the canner and how to ride the canner. When I go to ask for a left lead canner, I am going to take my left foot off, I'm going to slightly tap with my right foot only and give him a kiss. Now when I ask for the left lead canner, I'm going to take my right foot off, slightly tap with my left foot and give him a kiss. To tell which lead he is on, I'm his. To tell which lead he is on, either either one of the shoulders. If he is on his left lead, his left shoulder should stretch out farther, 
If he is on his right lead, his right shoulder should stretch out farther. Um, you don't have to look at the feet. It is all right if you, it is all right if your horse does not pick up the correct lead. Just stop and tell him whoa, and then back him up a few steps, and then ask again. If he does not pick it up again, it's okay. Just stop, back him up, and ask him again. When he does pick up the correct lead, let him canter out a few strides, and then stop and reward him. Now I'm going to show you a left lead canter. So I'm going to ask with my right foot only, kiss, and I'm going to pick up the canner. He was on the correct lead, so I'm going to reward him. Now I'm going to demonstrate a right lead canner. I'm only going to ask with my left foot and give him a kiss. You always want to look where you're going. Quit. You always want to keep your heels as far down and as back as you can possibly. You always never want to pull on your horse's face because if you pull on your horse's face, all he's going to do is not want to move forward and he's never going to want to canter. You always want to sit back and relax and never be so stiff that it's just painful. And to tell that he was on his correct lead going the right way, his right foot went his right shoulder went out farther than his left, and he was, so now I'm going to reward him. And that is how you ride the canner and ask for the cue for the canner. Thank you. This is Paul Dunn from Mule City Feeds. We've been delivering horse feed to Eastern North Carolina since 1981. And not only have we been delivering it, we've been leading the industry so far as compliance with state North Carolina and giving the best quality product possible. We test everything that comes in from the local farmers. We do quality assurance and we deliver the product. Give us a chance. Your neighbor's giving us a chance. We'd like to have your business here at Mule City Feeds. Also, when you deal with the big feed companies, you might have to wait four or five days just to get the feed. Give us a call and you'll be shocked we'll deliver an hour.